Whispers of unease murmured through the steel-laden corridors of Comet Halcyon Colony as the red alert klaxons began their piercing wail. The safe, predictable rhythm of life in the cold vacuum of space shattered in an instant, a harsh reminder of the fragility clinging to their existence at the final frontier. The cause, an impenetrable cloud of asteroids, an uncharted sea of silent death had been spotted on a collision course with their celestial haven. Elder Deason, his face weathered like the comet's surface but ordinarily composed, now bore creases of worry as he peered into the abyss from the observatory deck. Asteroids varying in size from negligible pebbles to monstrous titans tumbled through the void heedless of the panic they sowed among the comet's settlers. The colonists, sturdy men, women, and children who had adapted to the harshness of space with an unwavering resilience, gathered in the main atrium, their eyes locked on the giant hollow screen displaying the trajectory predictions. The room lapsed into a dreadful silence punctuated only by the hum of the comet's core engine and the intermittent cries of infants, unaware of the impending doom. We have six days, declared Marik, the lead astronomer, his voice quivering with the weight of celestial certainty. Optimism had no place here, not with the merciless inevitabilities of Newtonian physics bearing down upon them. The youngest of the Halcyonans were ushered away, a pretense of normalcy attempted for their sake. Meanwhile, the adults exchanged stern looks and grim nods. It was Leda, the colony's chief engineer, who first broke the silence. Her voice, a lecture in defiance, cut through the tension. We're not dust yet, and I'll be damned if we let some space rocks decide our fate. Brainstorming became their new mode of survival. The best minds among them assembled in a cerebral forge, ideas clashing and sparking like the asteroids that threatened them. Then, the audacious solution presented itself. To alter the course of their home, their comet turned lifeboat as one might steer a colossal ship away from an iceberg. With precision that could only be born of desperation and ingenuity that came from being cornered by the cosmos, they set to work. Leda directed the engineering crews, modifying the thrusters for a powerful, sustained burn. This was to be their great gambit, wrestling with the forces of gravity and momentum, a celestial chess move against an opponent known for its unwavering brutality. The community waited with bated breath as countdowns echoed throughout the settlement, a mantra against their awaiting oblivion. And then white-hot thrusters roared to life, violent and beautiful. The comet shuddered. A metallic groan swept through the colony, riveted onto its surface as it veered from its historic path. Dason, standing at the observatory, watched the universe twist and dance around them. Eyes fixed on the display, he saw the course of destiny redrawn, a sliver of space between their comet and the vengeful tide of asteroids. Thrusters at full burn! Now! Leda exclaimed over the intercoms, her authority rivaling the roar of inflamed propulsion. The settlers gripped whatever they could as an artificial gravity storm took hold. Bolts strained, the skeletal frame of the Halcyon cried, and the hearts of every being aboard clenched in solidarity. Outside, the canvas of space contorted, stars streaking into lines as if painted by an impressionist's brush. The gamble paid off. A slingshot maneuver sent Halcyon skimming past the field of deathly rocks, spared from annihilation but hurled towards the unknown. With every soul on board sent reeling into frenzied cheers and tearful embraces, knowing they had cheated certain erasure from existence. But their respite would be fleeting, the first in a series of cosmic trials. Ahead lay the shrouded expanse, an unavoidable morass that thrived on unpredictability, but the Halcyonans, with hearts steeled by survival and eyes alight with fervent resolution, now faced this new peril together. With the last echo of danger passing, Elder Deason turned from the cosmos to his people, knowing the true journey of the drifters of the cosmic shore had only just begun. The Comet Halcyon, having narrowly dodged violent oblivion, sailed into the shrouded expanse, a nebulous wilderness speckled with the potential for prosperity or peril. The survivors, still teetering from their meteoric brush with death, braced for the void's volatile embrace. The Expanse was a legend among spacefarers, a place where laws of nature danced erratically and space nomads roamed like phantoms in the cosmic winds. A cascade of colors swirled beyond the viewports as the comet dipped into the Expanse, the beauty of it betraying the dangers lurking within. 
Resources abounded, spectral anomalies flickered across sensors, and whispers of unexplored territories taunted their adventurous spirits. Crews worked in shifts, carving into asteroids rich with ores, harvesting exotic gases from neon-shrouded giants, and capturing rogue comets frozen in time. Each bounty returned to the colony was a victory anthem, a defiant shout into the abyssal choir that they would not just survive, but thrive. But the Halcyon wasn't alone in the waltz of celestial discovery. Shadows skirted the edge of scanners, figures of sleek ships spiraling in the darkness. The nomads of the Expanse regarded the newcomer with the quiet curiosity of starfaring veterans eyeing green explorers. A dance of diplomacy began, with Halcyon's emissaries venturing into the vacuum to parley with these enigmatic wanderers for passage and knowledge. The nomads, their vessels as diverse as their stories, bearing the patina of countless cosmic storms, emerged not as aggressors but fellow heirs to the Expanse's bounteous and treacherous domain. Tales were exchanged, a resonance of shared humanity amidst the Expanse's haunting splendor. It was during one such assembly, held in a chamber where holographic star maps floated like celestial jellyfish, that talk of the Haven first brushed the settlers' ears, a planet ensconced within the Expanse untouched and ripe for life. The idea seeded itself deep within the colony's collective desire, a permanent home, a terminus to their nomadic trials. Whispers turned to chatter, chatter into clamorous excitement. The proposition held the iridescence of dreams, of an end to the weary drifting, to anchor their lineage upon a stable rock. The comet's trajectory was once again the subject of intense scrutiny. Paths were plotted and replotted, minds and machines working in unison toward the grandest of all expeditions, seekers of haven in the shrouded breadth of space. Even the nomads, with smiles of season knowing, provided cryptic guidance, akin to riddles wrapped in stardust. And so, with renewed purpose and a course charted towards hope, the Halcyon colony embraced its destiny as it plunged deeper into the enigmatic curtain of the shrouded expanse. Unaware that its greatest challenge was just on the horizon, as unforgiving as the void itself. The void of space rippled with newfound intent as Comet Halcyon set its sights on the fabled haven, but the cosmos, ever a tapestry of unforeseen weaves, revealed a vision that set every colonist's pulse sinking with the hum of the comet's engine, a generational vessel of monumental size, its hull etched with the chronicles of a millennia long voyage. It was a titan among stars its presence commanding yet somber, like a grand old library brimming with untold stories. With the cautious grace of interstellar kin, Halcyon approached, establishing contact with a civilization of peers, keepers of history and wisdom known as the Valerian Creed. Their ship, a fortress of knowledge named the Eon Wanderer, cast a temporary shadow over the Halcyon, dwarfing the settler's comet home, a magnetic bridge connected the two voyagers of the cosmos, allowing a passage of bodies and ideas alike. The Valerians, with their solemn robes and crystallized data archives, offered an exchange, a cultural symbiosis that would sow seeds of unity between disparate pilgrims of the stars. Inside the grand assembly halls of Eon Wanderer, under vaulted chambers lit by bioluminescent flora, the Halcyon emissaries walked on cushioned moss that carpeted metal floors. A symphony of scents, earthen and arcane, filled their senses, the air alive with the charge of discovery. Elder Dason, led by the Valerian matriarch herself, listened with rapt attention to the tales of worlds seen and unseen, of civilizations met in peace and parted in respect. Each hologram flickered with the hope of a thousand suns until at last a singular planet bathed the faces of Halcyon's chosen in a verdant glow. Haven, the untainted jewel of the expanse, lived not just in myth but in coordinates and stardust-laden paths. Mingling amid the Congress of Species, the settlers gleaned insights into arboriculture and arcane sciences, bridging gaps in their survival acumen with the wisdom of the creed. In turn, they shared tales of the comet's resilience, singing hymns of existence under the shroud of unwelcomed asteroids and the crucible of unknown frontiers. As Halcyon prepared to depart, tethered by the promise of a new beginning, the matriarch gifted a relic to Elder Deason, a luminescent orb encasing an ancient star map to guide them through the treacherous currents of the expanse. 
The settlers' hearts thrummed with the beat of potential as they bid farewell to the creed. The comet, once adrift with no anchor, now surged with purpose. Each colonist stood witness to the dawning of a new epoch. Shimmering charts materialized before the uplink pilots, stellar constellations unfolding like a road yet to be traveled, a cosmic breadcrumb trail leading to a world that beckoned with the whisper of tides and the caress of winds. A constellation, known to the creed as the Mother's Embrace, marked the entrance to Haven's Embrace. Towards this celestial rune did the Halcyon set its course. Across the expanse they ventured, their spirits buoyed by anticipation as the Eon Wanderer faded into the backdrop of stars, a gentle reminder that in the vastness of space, the unity of seekers was the truest compass. As Comet Halcyon coursed towards the Mother's Embrace, the euphoria of imminent arrival danced amidst the crew, a prelude to the celebration of their search's end, Yet in the grand theater of the cosmos, destiny off-scripts an unforeseen act, and for the settlers of Halcyon, the stage was set for a grim performance. Without forewarning, the comet's bow dipped into an unseen maelstrom, a nebular storm of unparalleled fury. Space churned with a wrathful energy, its violent hues of emerald and amethyst clashing against the void, birthing a tempest that could shred metal and aspirations alike. Panic surged through Halcyon's veins like static. The corridors became veins of disarray as the inhabitants clung to anything solid. Children were swept into protective embrace, their eyes wide with fear, witnessing the once serene starscape contort into a colossal rage. Stabilizers at maximum. Redirect auxiliary power to the shields, commanded Leda from her console, fingers dancing across keys in orchestrated frenzy. The tempest roared in response, a resounding boom shivered through Halcyon's shield. The settlers, intrepid hearts bound by common survival, forged a barricade of will against the tumultuous siege. Elder Deason steadied himself, his gaze fixed on the viewports, eyes reflecting the storm's ferocity. Hold course, he muttered under his breath as if such conviction could sway the insatiable maw of the nebula. Alarms screeched, the very metal bones of the colony creaking in protest as Halcyon was swallowed whole by the storm. The light of distant suns was snuffed out by the writhing mass, leaving the comet ensnared in a pitch so deep it was as if they had plunged into the universe's own abyss. A loud crack echoed, a harbinger of calamity. One of the makeshift thrusters, repurposed in their original celestial dodge, surrendered to the storm's onslaught. The resulting blast was a blinding flash of destruction, severed sections spiraling away like leaves in a gale. In the control room, Merrick's voice cut through the tumult. Multiple breaches in sectors three and four. Life support systems waned, and Halcyon's heart, the core engine, flickered like a faltering candle. People scrambled. Their very breaths were at the mercy of punctured walls and the flicker of power coils. Through the chaos, moments of poignant humanity emerged, neighbors ushering one another towards safety, shared gazes of silent resolve, and clasped hands signifying unspoken pledges of solidarity. And then, as abruptly as it had emerged, the fury of the nebula subsided, leaving behind a deafening quiescence. The settlers emerged tentatively from their shelters, each breath a whisper of incredulity. The Halcyon colony, now fractured across the expanse, faced an undulating tide of despair. Many were lost, swept into the void or sealed in compartments adrift. For those who remained, hope flickered dim against the oppressive shadows of the shrouded expanse. Deason, crestfallen, surveyed the damage. In that moment, the haven they sought seemed farther than ever, a paradise eclipsed by the storm's aftermath. Yet amidst the ruin, the will of Halcyon burned still. It may have been battered by the cosmic gale, but extinguished, it was not. Desolation claimed the moment, yet within the hearts of the settlers, the ember of determination awaited the breath to reignite it. In the aftermath of the storm, the comet Halcyon colony clung precariously to life, its flanks riddled with scars of survival, its people surrounded by a graveyard of debris that was once part of their comet home. With the navigational systems barely clinging to functionality, they relied on the ancient star maps provided by the Valerian Matriarch, and inherited hope amidst calamity. As the navigators traced pathways mapped in antiquity, 
Etched with the constellations unseen by human eyes for generations, a root crystallized, each star a beacon urging them onward. The reactors groaned with renewed vitality, propelling Halcyon through the expanse with the frailty of a wounded but undeterred creature. The colony's approach to Haven summoned the attention of another, the Marauders, spacefaring nomads of a more predatory creed, eyeing the verdant world with covetous intent. Sleek, rapacious vessels encircled the planet, their hulls inscribed with tales of conquest and dominion. With Haven in sight, a symphony of greens and blues tantalizingly close, the Halcyonans mustered their spirit for one final defense. A defense not just of flesh and blood, but of dreams and futures. Their resolve a shield greater than any alloy. Leda orchestrated the Halcyon's hobbled defenses, while Elder Deeson and the Council dispatched fervent appeals across the channels, seeking parley or at the least a hesitant truce. But Marauder Codes held no ear for pleas. Their language was power, their dialogue through the force of arms. The skirmish erupted as the marauders descended like birds of prey, laser fire painting deadly arcs across the void. Halcyon's retaliation was not of aggression, but the desperate will to preserve their sanctuary's promise. In the chaos, a voice pierced the void, commanding both factions to cease. A voice from beyond Halcyon or marauder ranks, the nomads of the Expanse who Halcyon had first encountered with cautious gestures of diplomacy now resurfaced as guardians. Their ships, an amalgamation of scavenged technologies, sailed into the fray with an authority that challenged the very stars to bear witness. The Expanse called no one master, and the nomads would not see its balance desecrated by unchecked plunder. A stalemate emerged, the marauders' aggression tempered by the prospect of a multi-front war against a united front of Halcyon survivors and Expanse natives. In the silence of an armistice, the colonists descended on Haven, their journey's weariness sown into the land as they touched soil. It was an indelible moment. The crisp breath of an alien world, the murmur of its oceans, and the caress of its winds upon their sun-starved faces. Together, they stooped, hands plunging into the fertile earth, forever binding them to this world, their odyssey at its climax with the world's life a testament to their perseverance. But victory's bloom bore the bitter tang of sacrifice, as remembrance filled every heart for those lost to space's indifferent maw. The Halcyon survivors erected monuments, not just of rock and metal, but living memorials that grew from the ground and reached for the stars, a promise of remembrance and the birthright of future generations. In the nascent light of Haven's twin sons, the colonists of Halcyon assembled among the burgeoning spires of their new settlement. With the harshness of survival transcended, they gathered not merely as wayfarers adrift, but as founders laying the bedrock for a burgeoning world. Haven's air, tinged with the scent of alien flora, bore witness to a ceremony befitting the end of their epic journey. The colonists stood, a tapestry of resolve and reminiscence, their eyes reflecting the verdant landscape that had become their hard-won oasis. Elder Deeson stood at the fore his figure etched against the backdrop of burgeoning towers and farming domes, the promise of civilization reborn. He placed a time-worn hand upon the polished surface of the monument before him, the Halcyon Memorial. It bore no engravings of names, for the vastness of space had claimed too many, leaving untold stories adrift in the cosmic sea. Instead, the twisting metal and stone soared skyward, capturing the comet's essence, their vessel their sanctuary that had shepherded them to this haven. Our journey will be etched into the annals of this world, the comet's legacy carried forward in every stone we lay and every field we sow. Deeson's voice was a soft echo, reaching the hearts of his kin. We honor the past not by standing still, but by walking forward. Children wove through the crowd, their laughter a melody that transcended the solemnity of the moment. They chased one another, feet stamping upon the ground of their forebears' struggles, innocent of the tears and toils, but inheritors of their triumph. Leda, her engineer's hands now turned to the till, felt the soil sift between her fingers, a tactile sign of beginnings. She watched her fellow settlers, each engaged in acts of creation, building not just homes, but a heritage. 
And so, under the watchful gaze of the cosmos, the drifters of the cosmic shore laid down the roots of their legacy, through every structure erected, through each lesson taught to the young who would someday gaze upward with wanderlust in their eyes, the comet's spirit of exploration and discovery lived on. As evening descended, the planet's twin moons rose, their glow a soft benediction over a world no longer silent, but alive with the murmurs of a civilization taking its first breaths. Here, the story of the Halcyon colony found its closure, among the rustle of leaves and the shimmering constellations that once charted their destiny. Halcyon's survivors looked skyward, their gazes engraved with the memory of their cosmic cradle, knowing they were forever a part of something greater, a continuum that spanned the heavens and the fertile grounds of Haven. And the expanse, the great shrouded expanse, continued to cradle its secrets and wonders, its expanse an eternal frontier for the souls daring enough to venture its boundless trails. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos coming your way.